We've done steak six ways, we've done ribs three ways, and now we're doing chicken five ways. Five, five. Whole roasted chicken with herbes de de Provence. Sounds fancy, tastes fancy. Simple AF. Poached chicken, might be your new favorite way for a salad. Just gonna tell you, it's perfect. We're gonna sous vide some thighs and then finish them in the pan to get them crispy and buttery and gorgeous. We're gonna uh, grill some wings with a za'atar seasoning. Welcome to a whole new world of flavor. And last but not least, probably not in any of this order, we will be doing a, a, a crispy, shallow fried uh, chicken breast that will go on a salad with a poached egg. We're eating big today, boys, aren't we? Hell yeah. Okay, so uh, we're gonna start with the roasted chicken because it takes trace horas, or three hours in Canadian. That's a whole chicken. I believe you could recognize that, right? That's what the kid looks like. Back, stomach, the breasts, legs, arms, sorry, wings, you know. My preferred way of cooking a roast chicken is raised, on a rack. If you don't have this, that's fine. Here's what you might want to do. You might want to take an onion, just whack off the ends. God. Sorry, don't Max, don't. Get rid of this skin part, simply, quickly. It's never simple or quick when I want it to be. Peel all that bull off and get rid of it. Now you just do this, get yourself a couple thick slices. Like this, like this, and like this. So when you don't have this rack, you go like this. You take your onions and you go like this, like this, like this. And now the chicken sits on top. So not only is it raised up and the, the air can sort of flow underneath, but you're gonna end up with these super soft, luxurious onions at the end of it that'll be great eating. So we're gonna keep the onions, but we're gonna use the rack. Look, you're welcome to always use the rack and onions. I'm just giving you your options. We'll set these out. Okay, but here, here's how we want to prepare this little chicken fellow. First, we're going to give it some oil so everything sticks. Could be butter. Of course, I'm using avocado oil because I don't need flavor, really. We're going to add the flavor in the form of the herbs that are going to go on this. Flip the kid all the way around, the legs, under the arms. Gorgeous. So, it's gonna get a couple things. It's gonna get salt and pepper. Beautifully. Next is this, Herbes du Provence. A herb mixture that comes from the Provence region of France. And you can see, see the purple? That's a little lavender in there. Uh, the rest of this is made up generally of, consulting the Wikipedia, Herbes de Provence typically are made up of a savory, Marjoram, rosemary, thyme, and oregano. In this case, I see lavender. Lavender. Everybody, lavender. 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 <laughs> Look, you just buy it already done. You make your own if you want to, but who wants to make their own herbs de Provence? Easier to buy it, and it's really good with chicken. You're going to like this. You guys are going to like it for sure. I don't know about you guys because you're not going to be able to taste it, but all right, come back and let's finish. So we scatter, 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 everywhere, lovely, lovely, beautiful. Okay, now we flip the kid over like this. Now we're gonna put him on top of our onions like this. Same thing, salt and pepper. Nicely done. Don't forget the arms, under the arms. Wings, sorry, why do I do that? Wings, wings, wings. Now the herbs de Provence. It's a nice cover. Beautiful, right? Okay, a couple more things and then we're ready. Now we're gonna take some lemon. I don't need these ends. Cut, cut. These guys are gonna go inside. This part right here. I like to give a little squeeze when they go in so they start to give off a little bit of their juice, not too much. It'll help perfume from the inside out. Make sure they're there. Down they go. Now, I don't want the legs flailing out like this during cooking. So I'm gonna take a piece of cooking twine, 
bought a new one today and I have no idea where it starts. What the f Anybody see where you would start this? No. Why would they do this? It's a test. Here we go. Got it. Don't got it. What the frick? Well, this is, this is madness. Oh, there's an end. Oh, they should mark it somehow. Okay. So just do this. Get a piece of this. Cut off right here. And then we're going to do this. We just want our legs to sort of stay together. Like this. And I'm okay with just that. I'm losing lemons. Fine with this little knot. Cut. We reassemble. We make sure. Tight. It doesn't have to be tight. Oh, Max is saying this doesn't look tight. It doesn't have to be tight. I just don't want them flying out. That's all. But now we come to this end, and now the wings, we're just gonna, we're gonna take the wings and just tuck them under this way, like this. Sit everybody pretty. Now you gotta admit, that's a nice looking little chicken from the top. Now here's the good part. The good part is we cook this low and slow. 300 degrees for basically three hours, to that's 160 degrees inside. That's gonna give you a beautiful, but succulent, juicy, moist, tender chicken that you can do all kinds of things with, in addition to just eating like this. Into the oven, 300, I'll be back. Next up, chicken thighs. Bone in, I love them bone in. We're gonna sous vide these, we've talked about it before. Sous vide is a constant temperature water bath. You set it at the temperature you want your food to be cooked to. Fish, uh, beef, chicken. And when it gets to that temperature, it doesn't go over, it can't go over. We're gonna set this to 155 degrees. That means when the chicken gets to 155 inside, it will not go one degree over because the water bath is set at 155. And then we'll sear it and do beautiful things to it. But it's a really great way to cook things like that. And the beauty of it is, is this chicken will be ready in about an hour. If you don't get to it for an hour and a half, two hours, or three hours, it still will not go over. Restaurants use sous vide all the time to cook things, get them ready, and then finish them off at time of service, much like we're gonna do with this. So let me show you how this goes down. We begin with the seasoning. I don't need oil here, kosher salt, pepper, and because I like it and I want it, we're gonna give it a little smoked paprika, and that will look like this. Just a, like a little pinchy, a little pinchy, you know, Max, a little pinchy? Beautiful, oh, the smokiness is coming out right now. Okay, then we flip, do the same to this side, back with our paprika, oh, the wind. You might get a face full of smoked paprika, Max. I'd be careful. Beautiful. All right. You could use a vacuum sealer at this point, but we're just going to use a Ziploc bag. So we'll put the pieces in side by side. We're not going to zip it up because I'll show you why when we get to the sous vide. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take the bag with the open top and slowly lower it into the water. My water's at 155 degrees. And you can see, as you push it down, it kind of seals its way around the chicken, which is great. So there's no air in there. And then I like to use a big ass binder clip, like that, keeps it in place, and we're set. And I realize you want your chicken generally somewhere around 160, 165. We'll pull it at 155, and then the extra time to brown it in the pan will raise the temperature, and everybody will be happy, safe, and eating well. Poaching, a chicken breast, takes about, uh, 15 minutes, but you get perfect tenderness and deliciousness. The goal today is simple. Show you a bunch of different ways that you can cook chicken. And, and poaching is a, is a gentle way that guarantees it stays on the right side of the dryness level. Does that make sense? Yeah. Done correctly, you will not dry out your chicken if you poach it. There you go. It's very simple. So poaching is just uh, cooking it uh, in, in the liquid. I like chicken broth. I think it adds to the flavor. We'll add a couple things. What's important is you don't take your chicken breast and plunge it into water or chicken broth or vegetable broth that's already simmering away on the stove. Oh no. We're going to start with cold broth and let it come up slowly. This will ensure the tender chicken that we oh so crave. We begin with a little pot. And in our case, I'm going to put in a couple cups of chicken broth. This is bone broth. It's a little deeper flavor. 
It's going to be rich, delicious. It's like I'm milking a cow. And be fabulous. Okay, so we're going to add a okay, half a dozen or so peppercorns, black pepper, a couple little end pieces of lemon, squeezed and dropped in, one bay leaf, doop, and our chicken breast that I will nestle gently in here. Oops, and I forgot a little salt. I'm sorry. So a little salt. We'll mix that up with the butt end of a Sam the Cooking Guy four inch paring knife. Multiple uses, ladies and gentlemen, multiple uses. And this now will go on medium high heat. And down we go. Now the key is to leave it. The key is also to watch it. It's gonna start to come to a baby simmer and we don't really want anything more than that. And then using our instant read thermometer, we're gonna watch it when it gets about a just past 160, we're gonna pull it. After a few minutes, you can see it's just starting to show a little movement in here. We don't want anything more than that. I really don't want to simmer. I certainly don't want to boil. So just let it do its thing right here. If you have to turn it down a bit, turn it down. We'll come back, we'll check it when we're right around 160. Out the kid comes. And we're just bumping up to 160. So let's take this little guy out, put him on a plate, let him rest for a couple minutes, and we eat. All right, so we take our little friend, we put him down, him, I'm guessing. Don't really know, because I just don't know. And now we'll slice, again, always against the grain. Whoa. Jeez, Auntie M, <laughs> Chance, nice, nice where'd that come from? It came above, it's uh, <laughs> getting us this shade. Oh, yeah, it was up here. <laughs> wow. So we'll cut. Beautiful little slices. And it's gorgeous. I don't know if you can see this. It's perfectly juicy. Here's what I like to do. I like to take this, like that. A little plate for a salad. My chicken on top. Spread it out so it's all pretty. Look, at this point you can put really anything you want on it. Imagine if you had, oh, there's some like a little Italian dressing, a few drizzles of really good olive oil, some salt and pepper, and it's perfect. Poached chicken. Nothing not to like. I mean, damn it. It's just tender. Juicy, perfect. Mm. So don't make one. Make like four or five of them. Make sure there's enough broth or water or stock in the pot to cover however much chicken is in there. But then just make a, a bunch, let it cool, slice it, put it in a Tupperware in the fridge. And you got it for a salad, you've got it for a quesadilla, you've got it for a taco, you've got it for anything. Sandwich. Mmm. Mmm. Next, crispy panko shallow fried chicken. Yum. Our crispy shallow fried chicken begins with chicken breast in a bag. Uh, it's already pretty thin. I'm just going to get this side a little thinner. You know, when I do this, I've got a little oil in here too because I worry if I don't have it, I'll, I'll shred the breast and I don't want to do that. I want to go about a quarter of an inch all the way across. Once again, the key is the same thickness will cook at the same time. And when that's ready, we get our breading station set up. And you know how this works? three-part system. First part is flour. Second is a broken egg. Sorry, I mean the second is a beaten egg. So we'll do this. Beautiful. Last but not least, panko crumbs to help with the crisping. Beautiful. Here's our chicken. We're going to give it a little salt and pepper. Look, at this point, you can give it anything you want. Paprika, cumin, garlic powder, all of that stuff. We're just going to go simple today. This is not uh, really about a recipe. It's more about a technique. Got it? Got it. Chance? Got it. Thank you. Just making sure you're awake. All right. Next into the flour. And you know why we do this. Flour first helps the egg stick and adhere. Knock off the excess, the edges, and into the egg. Both sides of the chicken are covered nicely with the egg. We go straight in after some drips off. 
into our panko like this. Cover them up, push down, flip it over, get it in the spots so that it doesn't have any, and when it's perfect, we go to the oil. Today's episode is sponsored by Thrive Market. You've heard me talk about Thrive before. We love Thrive. Thrive is an online membership-based market with one goal to make healthy living easy and affordable for everyone. It's actually two goals, but they're both really great goals. Think of it as a supermarket that is online. You sit at home in your jammies, you check out the website, you look and you see what they've got. There's all kinds of stuff. There's organics, there's non-GMO, there's meat that we've used before, there's fish that we've used before, and the chicken in today's episode all came from Thrive. It's really a wonderful place. You're gonna love them. The savings are really great. You'll be really surprised at how great they are. And by the way, they're such lovely people. They've said, if you join Thrive Market today, you'll get a free gift and you'll get $20 off your chicken box on me. On me, on me, okay, on me. 20 bucks off your chicken box on me. I'm telling you, you're gonna love it. And you can make all the stuff we're making in today's episode. So what do you do? Use the link below, Thrive market.com slash stcg you'll save you'll eat well you'll be happy and don't forget 20 bucks off the chicken box from me you're welcome so we put our chicken in and we put it away from us we lay it away from us in case it splatters so just lay it towards max <laughs> right around 350 and it's gonna be fantastic honestly because it's so thin when it gets to golden brown on each side you're basically there you can check the temp, but because it's a little guy, it's gonna be no problem. And after a brief five minutes or so, oh gosh, our little buddy is ready to turn. Just listen. Wow. All right, let her finish. A little less time on this second side. And we're done. Wow. Gorgeous. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it off. We're gonna let it cool for a second. And then let me show you my favorite way to serve this. We start with the salad. Simple, couple ingredients, looking beautiful though. Now we take this gorgeous, crispy, beautiful piece of chicken and once again, listen. Nice. And my favorite part, ow, 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 is that. Let me tell you something, when you break that yolk and the richness runs into the chicken, we're talking heaven on earth, ladies and gentlemen. Heaven on earth in one bite. Dang, sniz up. All right, so it's gorgeous. It smells amazing and the crisp and the soft and the whole thing is, so I'm, I got a better idea. Let's just do this. Let's just cut a beautiful corner piece, beautiful chicken, and then this happens. Bam, and out it runs and you get the yolk all up in that, ch oh gosh. There's the bite everybody wants, folks. That one, right there. Oh my God. Oh my God. I want you to get your crispy shallow fried chicken game down. Because this, in this case, with the egg and the whole thing, tremendous. It could also be like a schnitzel in a bun, there's so many applications. Make that cut into little pieces for the little kids. Then they're dipping, they're eating, everybody's happy. All right, it's time for wings on the grill with, well, you'll see, so good. These are wings, four full wings uh, in this bag. We make a marinade and the basis of the marinade, the important part is something called the za'atar. It's a, it's a, Middle Eastern-ish spice mix. It's coriander, there's cumin, there's sesame seeds. There's also sumac, which is maybe something you haven't had, that, but it, it gives this citrusy, amazing, delicious flavor. Look at uh, Herbes de Provence and Zatar. You're coming away today with two new things that will amplify the flavors of many things that you make. So we make our marinade, we get it in the bag, then the wings go on the uh, grill. Yeah. We begin with some super rich and delicious olive oil. We're gonna make a little extra because we want for basting after. Then we will add the following. Some garlic paste that you know is absolutely my new fave these days. 
Lemon juice. I'm gonna really give a shit about the seeds. They're not really gonna get in our way here. Little splash of soy sauce. I can hear somebody complaining, but until you taste it, don't complain, buddy. Or whoever. Big junk of salt and pepper. And our zatar. It looks like this. Lovely. A little bit more. And we mix. Mm-hmm. Perfect. So we're gonna go straight into our wings. Mixing well. About half. Close up the bag. And everybody gets covered. Beautifully. And when they are, these can go sit in the fridge for two hours, four hours, or overnight. And after about uh, two and a half, two and three quarter hours, look at what we've got. Sacre bleu. C'est fantastique. It's gorgeous. Let me tell you, the entire inside of the house smells ridiculously beautiful. Oh my God, the smell. Oh my God, the smell. Every time I walk in that kitchen, it's like France in there, isn't it? Exactly. Without the attitude. Come on, I'm just joking. Everybody knows the French have a... We lost all of France. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody knows the French are little, you know, what's the word? Super nice, loving people. That Super nice, love. loving people. Yes. Wow. Skin. Yeah, color. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can do this. We'll cut the leg strings. But let's see if we can do this. Look at this juice. Do you see this? Oh, it's running down my hand. Oh my God. Amazing. Juice. Oh, the whole thing is like this. The whole thing. Max would have gone for the breast. And sorry, I'm a thigh guy. You know that. Honestly, it's the most juicy, crazy. I mean, do you see the dripping? It's just the most juicy, crazy, tender. All right, so here's the point. <laughs> the point is, damn it. The point is to eat more chicken. No, the point is cook your chicken like this, 300 degrees. Check it after a couple hours. I mean, depending on the size of your chicken, it could take three hours, it could take two and a half, you know. Check, you want to go into the breast, you want it to be 165. Use Herbe de Provence, I think you're gonna love it. It makes this so fragrant and lovely. Fish loves Herbe de Provence. Try new things, that's really the, uh, the message in all of this. I want to eat more chicken, but I have to stop. We've got to get our chicken thighs that are ready now to come out of the sous vide. Now that the legs have spent a couple hours in the marinade, on they go. And we're gonna use a hot side, not hot side. Commonly known, Max, as the? Indirect direct. There you go. So we're gonna give them some color right here on this hot side. And once they've got that color, then the kids are gonna move over. But because they have a oil as their base for the marinade, you are gonna need to watch them so that they don't start to flare up and burn up. And this little wing tip part that sticks up that doesn't make contact with the grill itself, that's fine. It's hardly anything there. It'll cook itself through just by being part of this whole thing. So let's close the lid. We'll give them a couple minutes and we'll come back. And let's look. Oh, smoke, a little bit of flame. This is all good. Oh, nice. Okay, well, now we'll turn them. And then I'm just gonna give them a little Get them to sit a little flatter in here. Now that we flip them, let's come back with some of our marinade with this zatar and the lemon. And yes, it's going to flare up. There's no question about that. So just be mindful. We'll move them off for a second. A little color on this side, and then we go over to the other. And oh, they're looking lovely. Nice. So let's come over here to the not so hot side. We'll brush them again. And now we'll shut the lid and we'll continue to cook. All right, we'll check again. Oh, hello guys. Beautiful. This is progressing very nicely. Let's not miss an opportunity to give them a little attention with this marinade. Okay, okay, okay. I see what you're doing here. I see what you're doing. No, I'm not particularly loving it. But but now we can close her down again and let it continue. And I think we're done. Let's have a look. 
Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. I had some pretty wings right there. All right, let's take them off, give them another uh, rub, and we'll eat them. So, like, maybe the best time to give them a little bit more of this marinade is right when they come off because they're hot and it just kind of sucks in all this deliciousness. Dang. I'm telling you, the thing that you're going to like about this zatar is it's a flavor profile you may not have ever had. And I think that's important in food. Look at this guy. It's gorgeous. I'm so happy with them. Oh boy, is it gonna be hot. Yikes. Why am I doing this to myself? Why, why, why? I need tongs. <laughs> uh, what's the thinking here? If I need tongs to hold this chicken, is biting it a good or bad idea? What the hell? Oh, the sitar. Mmm. 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 Cumin, coriander, mm, the lemon, the garlic, super delicious. And because of the way we cook them, I feel like I have marinade all over my mouth. Because of the way we cook them, one side hot to get some color and sear on them. And then over to the other side, and we basted. They are juicy and so damn tender. So damn tender. Okay, one more thing left to do. You know what that is? Sous vide. Sous vide. Right? Well, they're ready. I mean, they've been ready for a while, but because it's sous vide, it can sit. So we'll stop it. That's the end of the water. Get our bag. And look, you can see that there's liquid in here. The liquid's not gonna help these guys crisp up in the pan. So let's get rid of the liquid, dry them off a bit. All right, so here's how we do this. Get one of these guys out. Come on, buddy. We're just gonna put them on here. Remember, fully cooked to 155. We want a few more degrees out of them, and that's gonna happen when we sear them in the pan a little bit. They don't look that great. We want them looking great, so make sure they're all dry. This way, too. And when they're sufficiently dried up, we go to the pan. And we sear. Okay, I want two things here. I want some olive oil and I want some butter. Butter for flavor. Oil to keep the butter from burning. And when they look like that, and they can go. This is just about color now, ladies and gentlemen. Just about color. They've been seasoned. Push them up against the edge. When the protein you're cooking has a rounded edge to it, Definitely use the sides of the pan. Right there. That is what you want. Work your magic, baby, work your magic. Let's bring the little kid down the side now. Everybody goes that way, little guy goes here. Beautiful. And let's see what we're dealing with. We're dealing with that. Beautiful. And we're dealing with that. And that. That's what I was hoping for. Okay, so just before we take them off, let's give them a little of this butter, olive oil, deliciousness. Hey now. Can't hurt, can it? Oh no, I don't think it can. And when you've done that a few times, and you can't take it any longer, let's take them off and eat. And look at the glisteningness. <laughs> is that a word? It is now. And the gorgeousness. Oh, please, please, please. Fine, just a little more. I can't help it. I can't help it. And then a bite, just a bite. It's a big deal, you're having a bite. Who cares, it's just a bite. I'll come in here. I'll come in here. That's perfect. That, ladies and gentlemen, is dang near perfect. That's what sous vide does. I don't like everything with sous vide, but chicken, it's freaking ideal. Remember the smoked paprika? I do. I don't, it was seven hours ago. Holy effing shite. Hey, I got that sentence out without, without one swear word. Do you see this? Am I too close? This glisteningness? This gorgeousness? Hmm, look at this. Look at this! Look at this, look at them, look at those. We've done some very good work today. Some very good work. Thank you Thrive Market for sponsoring today's video. Your chicken is delicious. All right, everybody, go out into the world or your homes and make this stuff. I don't think there was a dog in the bunch, was there? Okay, quick, favorites, Chancy. What does dog in the bunch mean? The bad mean, one. There was no shitty one. Oh, gotcha. <laughs> Chancy, favorite. Uh, the wings on the grill. Maxi. Uh, this is the fried. The oh, shallow the, fried. The shallow fried. Uh, and me, it's gonna be this. Look at, 
three people, three opinions out of five. That means you can make this, have success with it, enjoy it, and don't eat the same thing the same way. That means you can make this, have success with it. We better go now. It's about to get ugly in here. It's about to get ugly up in here. See ya. Okay, so I just realized I asked the boys what their favorite was before they had tried the, um, the sous vide chicken thighs and then in the pan. So, have you changed your minds? The last one. Max's favorite, sous vide chicken thighs, then in the pan. Sous-vide. Chancy. Sous vide. Sous vide for Chancy and sous vide for me. It's a three way tie. That means you gotta make at least that one. At least.